I'd like us to pray this prayer today. I'd like to tell the Lord that tonight may my destiny connect my grace. And Lord, may the grace from above locate my destiny and take me to where you want me to be. Let's open our mouth and pray that prayer now. That God will connect your grace with the destiny so that the grace of God we speak in your destiny today and take you from where you are to where God only can take you to. Let's open our mouth and pray and say, God, let your grace locate me and locate my destiny today. Open your mouth and pray that prayer right now. And I also want you to pray and say, God, today, everything you have in stock, speak to my heart now. And bless me now. Open your mouth and pray. Father, do not pass me by today. I want you to do this for me. Just do this for me. Just get your grace. Connected to my destiny. And speak to my heart. Speak to my soul. And Lord, may I experience your grace today i know you can pray better than the way you are praying i know you can do better than the way you are praying just talk to the lord i say father don't pass me by i know you can speak better than the way you are doing you can just pray i say father today is my day lord today is my day I have toiled all the day. I've struggled all the day long. I've labored. But today, you will not pass me by. You will do something great. You do something new. You do something supernatural in my life. That's my destiny. Be connected to grace. Oh Lord. I will not remain like this. 40 years of toiling. 40 years of laboring. Today is an expiring day. Oh Lord, make it expired. And Lord, do it again. Do it again. Speak to my heart. Speak to my soul. Speak to my inner man. Quicken me again, Lord. Make me better. Make me better. Speak to my destiny. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Almighty Father, we want to thank you today. We bless your name today. Lord, as we come for tonight's Bible study, we ask God, speak to each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus. Open our eyes of understanding. Speak to our inner man. And Lord, we pray that your total revelation of your word revealed to your people in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for prayer answered. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Give me loudest. Amen. Tonight, I'm going to look at the study the people's favor. The people's favor. Now, there was a connection. There was a connection. Now, you see that as Moses left the house of Pharaoh and he went to the land of Midianite, why he was in Midianite, the people were left alone. Don't forget, I've told you that. Because of the weakness of Joseph, he couldn't reproduce anybody. And because he couldn't reproduce anybody, the next Pharaoh says, I don't know Joseph. Not because he didn't know Joseph one on one, but 
Joseph never produced anybody that could stand in the gap. So, the place was just like that. And all the people, all the people, including Joshua, were all laboring and they made all of them slaves and tax masters. Why? There was nobody to help them. So, this night, we're going to focus attention on the people that were in Egypt while Moses was in Midianite. And so, the reason why God asked to meet Moses was because the people's favor. Moses was in Midianite, but he was there with the people's favor. And the gods cannot leave the people like that. And 40 years down the line, Moses, they are not back. And they have spent additional 30 years. If you were following on this study, they have spent additional 30 years. They were made to leave Egypt. How many years? If you were following the study, how many years? 400 years. And so at this time, they were already how many years? 430 years. And so, God was, wasn't comfortable anymore. Moses, you are carrying the people favor. The people are still laboring. And here you are taking care of sheep. So, the people favor was what God remembered. And when God remembered that, he had to go and look for Moses. This night, it may not be you. Maybe because of your wife. Maybe because of your children. God will remember you tonight. You don't seem to understand. I think as we continue on this study, you are going to understand. I said, it may not be you. Now, a man carrying a nation cannot disappear. People that can disappear in the crowd are the people that has nothing inside of them. If you are carrying a nation, you can only be on delay line, but you can never be denied. Because God will remember you because of the people favored. And when God remember what the people are carrying, God will go and look for you. I know you are carrying somebody favor. Can you give me a loudest amen? If not for anything because of your children, God is not going to leave your children to be in hunger. God is not going to leave your father to be in hunger. God is not going to leave your wife to be in hunger. God is not going to leave people following you to be in hunger. Just because of them, God will remember you. Oh my God. I say God will remember you. That is what God is going to do this year. The people's favor. In Exodus chapter 3. The people's favor. You know, the people's favor was speaking. Do you see that the people couldn't talk anymore? They gave them tax masters. They can't do anything anymore. That they quiet their mouth does not mean that they can quiet their destiny. Why they tell them, shut up, their favor was speaking in the burning bush. Why they tell them, you can't move forward, their favor was speaking in the burning bush. Whether man likes it or not, when, when I'm sleeping, my favor will be speaking. When I am sleeping like this, I know something inside of me does not sleep. That thing will be speaking in the name of Jesus. And when that thing speaks, even Moses cannot resist it. Do you see what Moses did? Moses says, why did you look for me? Look at me here. I am I, I don't know how to talk. I am not eloquent. Go and look for another person. God said, no. You are the one that is carrying the people's favor. If you don't go back, the people are going to die there. You are the one carrying their favor. You cannot complain anything. Don't worry. I am the Lord God. I am that I am. 
You don't need to talk. I know how to do it. You, uh, Emoji says, but you know, I've not gone for Bible school. He said, whether you have gone for Bible school or not, I know how to do it. He said, but you know, I have never gone for discipleship class. Whether you have done that or not, you are carrying the people's favor. You need to go where the people are. There is another thing I also learned here. That until Moses came back, the people couldn't wake up. You see, when the man that carries your destiny, the man that is to drive your destiny, have encounter with you, everything that has been dumped, they will wake up and start speaking. And that is what is going to happen to you. Because as I'm setting my eye on you right now, everything that has been dead in your life, they are coming back in the name of Jesus. In Exodus chapter 3, Exodus chapter 3, in verse 21. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 21, it says, And I will give these people. It didn't say, I'm going to give Moses. It didn't say, I'm going to give Abraham. It didn't say, I'm going to give Isaac. It didn't say, I'm going to give Jacob. It says, I will give these people. The favor belongs to the people. The favor did not belong to the pastor. Do you know that sometimes we deceive ourselves? You know, as we pray, we just discover that a lame man rose up and walked. We say, come and see anointing on my life. That is fake. You don't have the anointing. It's congregational anointing. It's the people anointing. It's not your own. That is why you see, sometimes, the same miracle you did from the pulpit, you cannot do it when you are alone. The reason is because that anointing was not your own. It was a congregational anointing. It could be one man inside the congregation that is carrying that power. And that power is connecting from that man to you. The man may not be on the pulpit. The child may not be on the pulpit, but he carries that thing right there. That is why any, the more the church grows, the more the pastor do miracles. He does miracles because there are combination of grace. So when they gather together, they all release it on the pastor. And so the pastor will be doing miracles. Any pastor that thought that he can take the glory is fake. No pastor can take the glory. The miracle belongs to the people. Can you give me amen? Yeah. It is the people's favor. It's not your favor. If you understand that, you're not going to be proud. If you understand that, there is no arrogancy. If you understand that, you are a mere man. You're nothing. And so, anything you have in a family like this, there are families that, maybe why God is giving money to that family, is just one child in the house. Sometimes, if you can pray, and know the person that carries it in your house, all you need to do when you wake up in the morning, you tell the child, pray for me. Run up the prayer. You just start seeing things working. See, and God cannot create a family without dropping one. In every family, there is one. He will drop that one there. That one is the star of the family. You don't play with it. If you slap that child, you begin to see the home dragging down, dragging down. I, I know some of you had that experience. <laughs> Give me another amen. <laughs> there are people you don't touch. There are people who are carrying it. And I can see you are carrying the favor here. Yeah. Oh my God. Give me another amen. Yeah. And when you meet the people that carries the favor and the people that carries the favor meet the man that carries the anointing. There is difference between anointing and gifts. Moses was not carrying gifts. He was carrying anointing. Joshua, as at this time, was carrying gifts. And he was not carrying anointing. So, because he was still carrying gifts, he was a leader. Before Moses came back. But, he was still at the level of gifts. Not at the level of anointing. It doesn't drop inside of him. So, he couldn't take the people anywhere. But 
the anointing was with Moses. God dropped it inside of him. The anointing connects to the people grace, the people favor, and the journey became very easy. I pray that no doubts will be in this ministry. All of us will be great in Jesus' name. Look at Exodus chapter 3. In verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of who? Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Because of that, God must look for Moses. Moses cannot be there when the people is still empty. The prophecy was they will not go empty. And they must go. And I will give them favor. Not that I'm going to give Moses favor. But I'm going to give the people favor. And that is why I'm glad because I know that God is going to give sunrise favor. There is difference between the ministry favor and the pastor favor. The pastor favor is not enough. The pastor favor can take nobody anywhere. But the ministry favor is an ocean. You cannot finish drinking it. They say, as soon as I enter that church, now my life changed. Not the pastor. It is the ministry favor. This night, God is giving this ministry favor. Oh my God, if you love this ministry, give me amen. Look at it in verse 7, chapter 3, verse 7. Chapter 3, verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their what? Tax master, for I know their sorrow. That was what brought God up. It is this cry that turned to a favor in the life of Moses. Look at in verse 8. That is why if God wants to use you somewhere and you argued, you will either die or remain the way you are. You, you, you can't run away from it. Because until you are linked to where God wants you to be, you can go nowhere. Moses remain a, you know, a sheep rear until he went back to Egypt. Look at verse 8. And I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. I've come down to do that. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, and Moses said, I will not turn aside. Now that I've seen this, I need to turn back now. I don't need to argue anymore. Now, I will not turn aside. I need to go to that Egypt now. Is it not the same Egypt they pursue me away? That Egypt they say I cannot enter, now I cannot go there. You will go where nobody believes you can go in Jesus' name. As I look at these people, I see something. I saw that while Moses was in Midianite, God was working for the people. They couldn't have a man that can talk again. Only Moses have shouted on an Egyptian on behalf of the Israelites for all the years they've been there. When Moses left, nobody could rebuke any Egyptians. I said, why did you beat this man? Nobody. They didn't have anybody that can say that. But why Moses left, God was there. Do you see? God never allowed them to die. Do you see? God just kept them. That favor was still keeping them. The more they gave them labor, the more they became strong. I know that this is a different year in your life. If anybody has told these people that a day will come, that Moses will come back, they will not believe it. They will not believe it. 40 years down the line. If they have even told them that Moses is still alive, they won't believe it at all. But the day God will remember you is the day you don't remember. That is how it works. The day God will connect you is the day you never proposed that God was going to connect you. You could just wake up 
in the morning and God will just turn things around. You can see how God turned things around that day. I saw four things in this in their life. Number one, God unveiling the riches of his grace in the people. God unveiling the riches of his grace in the people. I, I see that God unveiled the riches of his grace in their life. Do you see that riches of his grace has been hidden tight and they are carrying it but they couldn't use it. They are carrying it but nobody could understand that they were carrying anything. They are carrying it but they were still in insult and assault. There are people with anointing. There are people with grace. There are people with this message. And yet, they are still living a wretched life. They are still laboring, suffering. That was how these people was as at that time. They were carrying so much of favor. God has released favor on their life. But men trample on their favor. And their favor was only end in the month. Today, God will take you from month and take you to palace in Jesus' name. So I see God unveiling that grace that has been hidden in their life. They were wonderful people. God says, these people are my people. God says, you cannot kill them. God says, leave them alone for me. In Psalm 100 verse 3, Psalm 100 verse 3, which people were these people? Let's see the people. God unveiling the riches of his grace in the people. Let's see Psalm 100 verse 3. 100 verse 3. Know ye that the Lord he is who? God. It is he that has made us. We were nothing. We were slaves. We were dying. He made us. And not we ourselves. If it was we, we can't get to Pharaoh. If it was we, we can't tell Pharaoh, let the people go. It was not we ourselves. Look at it. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And then, how did you become God's person? How did you become God's people? Because you need to be a God people first before you can be favored by God. In Ezekiel 14, in Ezekiel 14, see, you need to run now. In Ezekiel 14, you need to be a God people. Until you are now God people, God cannot bless you. He can only bless people that are his people. God must have taken you, makes you his people. In Ezekiel 14, verse 6, are you there? Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God. What is the next word? Repent. You need to do that. If you don't do that, you're not his people. Because God is angry with the wicked. How many days? Every day. So, you need to be born again. It is when you are born again, you now become God's people. Look at the next scripture now. In Jeremiah, in Jeremiah chapter 3, you need to be a God's people. You need to be a God's people. Until you are God people, God child, God daughter, God and God has Jeremiah chapter 3 in verse Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 13. Only acknowledge thy what? Iniquities. That is what you need to do. Only acknowledge thy iniquities. That thou hast done what? Transgresses against the Lord. Thy God. And hast done what? Scattered thy way to the strangers under every green tree. You know, you were made to be under green tree. And ye has not obeyed my voice, says who? The Lord. So, when once you can obey the voice of the Lord and you respect God and you can follow God, you become his own child. In Isaiah 43, Isaiah 43, 
Look at Isaiah 43 in verse 25. Isaiah 43 verse 25. I, even I, am he that blotted out thy transgression for my own sake. Not because of you are walking, not because of your title, not because you were so religious, but for my own sake. I am taking you out of Egypt, not because you are righteous than the Amalekites, not because you are righteous than the Benazites, but because I have said, I will give you a favor. And so God did it because he can do it. And he says, I even I I'm the one that brought out your name from the book of darkness. And I know that God will take you from every transgression in Jesus' name. When once that is done and you're born again, then Psalm 46 can work. Look at Psalm 46. Psalm 46 can work. Until that is done, Psalm 46 cannot work. Just run now, run. In Psalm 46, Psalm 46, 46 of Psalm, in verse 10, 46, verse 10. In 46, verse 10, be still. Don't worry yourself, the favor will soon speak. Oh my God. I said the favor will soon speak. So be what? Be still. I know that I am God. I will be exalted among the hidden. That was what the Lord did. He made sure that Pharaoh see that he is God. And that he will be exalted even among the hidden. Look at it. I will be exalted. Where again? On the earth or in the earth. And then in verse 11. The Lord of hosts is with me. You want me to say us? Come on, give me a amen there. <laughs> you don't want me to take anyone. Everything I should give to you. You don't try. I must take some more. Praise the Lord. Give me another hallelujah. And then it says, The Lord of hosts is with me. The God of Jacob is my refuge. And I know you will do it and perfect it in Jesus' name. So that is the first thing I saw. God unveiling riches of his grace through his people. Number two, God gives them divine protection. He gives them divine protections and longevity. He gives them divine protection. He gives them longevity, long life. Now, as you see these people... When Moses left, 40 years down the line, Moses did not die. They also did not die. You see, God was just too wonderful. But the Pharaoh that never knew Joseph died. And all the people that would have stopped the journey, they died. But these people never died. And God give them long life. See the protection. Let's see protection first. In Job. Job 22. See the protection. God gave them protections. He gave them protections. In Job. Job. 22. In verse 25. Job 22. In verse 25. Brethren, are we there? Alright. So let's look at it. Ye, the almighty, shall be thy word, thy defense. Even when you don't have a defense. That was what happened. As at this time, they don't have a defense again. But God was still their defense. Look at that scripture. 
the almighty God, the almighty shall be thy defense. And thou shalt have what? Plenty of what? Silver. God did not say you will have small silver. He said this month, how much I don't get? You know, I tried this month, I get 10,000. 10,000 now I get. God forbid. I say, God forbid. Plenty silver. Say it with your mouth. You know, go talk now. Say it again. If you don't like money, no talk. If you like money like me, say it. Me, I like money. Oh. If you don't like, I'm no problem. You can stay there. Oh. My own is holiness and money. Oh. Your own, you can do holiness without money. No problem. How many of you agree with me? Uh-huh. So I get plenty of people like this. Give me a loudest amen. God will give us money. You see, Christianity is so worst. Very, very bad without money. You can abuse God. You can be committing sin unnecessarily. You need money. You need money. Say, I need money. You know what I'm talking? Say, money. money. Say it again. Money. Shout them. Money. Say, money. Oh. Money. Uh-huh. <laughs> money must come in Jesus' name. It's important. Money must come. Because you, you see, if you remove money, can you get here? You need transport to get here. Am I correct? God will give us money in Jesus' name. Look at, he give them long life. In Isaiah 65, he give them long life. He give them money, he give them silver, and he give them long life. So, they were struggling, suffering, but at the end of the day, God gave them silver, and he took them from Egypt. Isaiah 65 verse 20. 65 in verse 20. Are you there? In verse 20 it says, There shall be no more things and what? An infant of this. None an old man that has not done what? Filled his days. For the child shall die and what? Hundred years old. But the sinner Oh my God. You are not talking. But the sinner being an hundred years old shall be a cause. Which means every sinner ought to die before hundred years. But a child of God cannot die below hundred years. That is what he has said. You know this one our Bible church. We are showing you from Bible. Do we say this? It's Bible. He's saying sinners should die before 100 years. That is why you cannot bother your head. You and sinner will go die first. The man will say, one kill you, kill you, kill you, kill you. How are you bothering your head? You go die. Now, if you look at the Bible in Genesis 25, in verse 7, you will see that Abraham lives 175 years. So he lives above 100 years. And then if you see Genesis 35, verse 28, you will see Isaac. Isaac lives 180 years. 180 years. 
So, they all have longevity. If you looked at Genesis 47, verse 28, you see that Jacob lives 147 years. So, they all cross 100 years. Moses was 120 years. Just trace all of them. There was none of them that died below 100 years. You will not die early. Yeah. You are not saying amen? Yeah. Anywhere you are going, don't fear. Nothing will kill you. You won't die. Because the righteous will live above 100 years. So he gave them long life. So they didn't die. They had to be alive until Moses came back and carried them through. Number three, we also see God respect parental covenant and blessing. God respect parental covenant and blessing. Now, as you carefully look at this, why was God doing this? Because God knew that he had a covenant with Abraham. And he cannot play on that covenant. He had so much respect to that covenant. In Genesis chapter 12, in verse 2 and 3, Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 and verse 3, and I will make of thee a great nation. It really says, I will make thee a great nation. It says, of thee. That is the people. God was much more interested in the people. He says, of you, I'm going to make great nations. Look at it. And I will bless thee. Your own, I will bless you. But when it comes to the nations, I will only make of you that nation. But you, I will give you a blessing. But then I will give them a favor. They will be a nation. You will be a blessed man. God will perfect this in our lives in Jesus' name. And it says, and I will make thy name great. And thou shalt be a word, a blessing. Any blessing God gives you that cannot make you a blessing to the world is not from God. I will make you a blessing. It didn't say I will make you to eat. No. Your food should be more than enough that others can eat. I hear what I'm saying. It's just like today um, some of our senior pastors we, we were talking and they, they met with me and I said, oh, I just remember I have some rice somewhere. And they said, like, how many bucks? I said, I know I have over 100 bucks there. So let them load like 30 bucks from there for you. I've forgotten that I even have them stuck in stock. That is how it should be. You know, yesterday I was asking my wife, I say, so after you guys share those cows, how many remain? She said about four remaining. So I said, okay, send some to the camp. That is how it should be. God must bless you. You are not giving me a member. I say, God must bless you. No, the one when you go, your wife go buy one lap of chicken. He said, how many of them been caught now? How many of them been caught? <laughs> Who can chop the other side? <laughs> God forbid. You are not talking, I say, God forbid. I know so many of you know they like your prosperity. Here you go, Yaramo. <laughs> I'm very interested in it. You know why? Because God has given you holiness already. What you need to add to it now is God must prosper you. Because when God prosper you with your holiness, you will just be like this. And I know God will do it in Jesus' name. If God has given you holiness, you have left sin alone. For a long time, you have not been committing immorality. You have to be immorality. Even lies. When you even commit small sin, like, even, even say lie now. Mistakenly, one like your heart will be hitting you. Boom, boom. Why did you say that? Why did you say that? Why did you do that? Then, bro, you're good to go. You're good to go. I know that God's favor must manifest in your family. 
God favor must manifest in your life this year in the name of Jesus Christ so God respect that covenant look at verse 3 and I will bless them that do what? bless thee and curse him that curses thee that was why when Moses returned he didn't fight the Egyptians because God did not say I will curse them no I will curse him it was straight to Pharaoh that was why when Moses came back to Egypt he didn't bother here calling the old land of Egypt and then look I don't come back let my people go no he waka go meet who that was the man God has cursed already he said, come, you. My Bible, my God has told me, I will cause him that stopped them. So he went to him direct. Don't pray wrong prayer. Let your prayer be direct. He went to Pharaoh straight. He said, let my people go. And then the man said, no, it's okay, you will see. In Peking, die. <laughs> Pharaoh said, no. The old water turned to blood. Pharaoh said no. Ah, the more he said no, the more we are like God. When he couldn't withstand it again, he said, okay, man, ah, where are they go? God will soon trouble my enemy this year. Eh? That my enemy cannot rest until he allow my wealth, my blessing, my favor go in the name of Jesus. And let me pray for you now. Any man troubling you, holding you captive, anybody standing like Pharaoh, I will cost him that causes thee. The cause of God upon that man in the name of Jesus. Sit down. So I will cost him that causes thee. In Genesis 27. Genesis 27, 2 to 4. Something happened there. You know about the case of Isaac. How Isaac wake up in the morning and called, thinking he was calling. He says, come Isaac. He look at Jacob. He look at Esau. He said, come, Esau, go and get me mute. Let me eat so I can bless you. If you read verse 4, he said, Jacob became a nation. Why? Because he was able to get that parental blessing. How he got it was no longer important to God. What was important to God now was that he was able to get parental blessing blessing. You know, some of you, your mother-in-law is in quarrel with you. It's not right. It's not. Some of you, you don't see your father-in-law. If you see your father-in-law, the man is a witch. If you see your mother-in-law, it's a witch. You can't go far. You cannot go far like that. And as a year, you don't talk to your father. You don't talk to your mother. All you're saying is that they are very bad people. You know, see me here, I'm born again. The man is not born again. Born again or is not born again. Parental blessing is recognized by God. Look for your father. Get your parent and make them happy. Don't ever play with your in-law. As I'm here, thank God, my in-laws, oh my God, we are just like this. We are like this. It's good to have a good relationship with our in-laws. Because when your mother-in-law stands and says, my Peking God bless you, you don't understand what happened. When your father stands and says, God bless you, you don't understand what happened. Do not play with where you are marrying from. Nobody should deceive you and say you should tell your father-in-law, Waka, punish your head there. I make mistake to marry from you. You know, everything I've been helping you, helping you. See, see, no man can pay for a woman. No man. 
See, Moses spent 40 years to marry one woman. 40 years. My friend, do you know how much it is for 40 years to marry one woman? Do you know how much? If they put the money you put together and marry that woman, you know, reach one day labor. Moses labored. You know, reach one day. And yet, the wife, his father in law had to bring her for him to get the wife back. If it was some of us, we would have slapped that woman that day. I have slapped that woman that day. He didn't slap the woman. If it was some of us, we would have said, come! Like one of our, 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 let me not use the word our pastor, one of our beloved, because he's hearing me now. And then, one of these days, he just called me. He said, daddy, daddy, eh, he, he, this woman will return back home. I said, why will she return back? If she return back, you, you will return back. In this church, this will not be church where you go say, pastor, they say now one big pastor day for one place in wife. No, they fake. We no go agree. You will come back. If your wife come back, you don't come back. If you never know how to wash that woman wrapper, go and start washing it too. Because this place, if the woman say, hey, you say, sorry. Sorry. Just obey. <laughs> Give me a good, good amen. <laughs> but I know our sisters, they are going to respect their husband. And we are going to have a beautiful family in Jesus' name. Amen. This will not be the one that will say, the man, a big pastor, wife, we know the see. No, 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 no. That will not be church. And the man can go to London. Where wife? No wife. No. If the man, they go. The wife, they go. If the wife cannot go, the man, you will stay. So you and your wife must go. So if you never look for your wife, better go look for your wife. <laughs> Give me Amen. Oh my God. I said, give me amen. And let me use this opportunity and talk to all of you. Those of you, the regional pastor, whatever pastor, you're coming for conference, come with your wife, or else as you're going back, <laughs> maybe you'll be going back <laughs> an empty man. If I don't see your wife, you must come with your wife. Who tell you you're doing pastoral without your wife? Who tell you you can go far without your wife? Your wife has a major role to play in your ministry. And I pray that God is going to bless us as we carry our wives along in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, that amen is looking too low. Amen. And then you can see how Rebecca ran to Jacob and said, Come, Jacob, you need to do something quick. Your father wants to bless somebody. And Jacob was smart and he got it. And that act may have been an act of sin. But God was looking at who has the father blessed. And then God gave him the blessing. Look at all the people that entered into Egypt. They were all from the noise of who? Jacob. And then that is where the nations grew from. See Esau. See Esau. He ended up marrying the, the daughter of each man. Study your Bible. He did not marry a Christian. He married a Muslim. All his life finished. Everything finished. He couldn't have parental blessing. He started by selling his right. You know what it means? That your father in the Lord say God bless you. Do you know what it means? Parental blessing. The man may not be as old as you are. But the man is carrying parental grace. And he said, God bless you. It makes a lot of meaning in your life. I know that you will not forget this in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number four. God release the people divine favor. God release their favor. This night, God is releasing your favor tonight. Yeah. In Exodus chapter 3. God release their favor. God released their favor. This favor has been tied down for 40 years. Plus 40 years. Moses spent 40 years in Egypt before he left. He spent another 40 years in Midianite. So these people have been in this situation for how many years? 80 years. 80 years. But after 80 years, God remind, remember them and release their favor. 
I know tonight God will release somebody favor. Chapter 3, verse 21. And I will give these people what everybody favored. Look at Psalm 30. Psalm 30. Because I will give it to them. They have labored a lot. They've been patient a lot. It is time for me to give it to them. He gave these people favor. In Psalm 30, verse 5. Psalm 30, 5 to 7. If I cannot go further again, I read here and then we start praying now because of our time. In Psalm 30, from verse 5 to 7. Are we there now? It says, For his anger endured but a moment. In his favor is what? His life. Which means the people have been dead for 80 years. Without God's favor, is dead. You see, in his own favor is life. When the favor release, the people begin to experience what life was all about. Your life will come back again. Well, I don't know of you. I say your life will come back again. Look at it. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comment from this morning, there will be joy. Look at verse 6. And in my what? Prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Look at verse 7. Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to do what? Stand strong. Thou did hide thy face, and I was in trouble. When God hid his face for 80 years, the people were in trouble. When God showed his face, things became different. I know God is showing his face in your life tonight. Look at Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. My God will show his face again. He'll show his face again. In Exodus chapter 12. Chapter 12 of Exodus. In verse 36. Exodus 12. Verse 36. In verse 36. And the Lord gave the people what? Favor in the sight of the Egyptians. So that they lent. These were people that were borrowing. They now became lender. They now lent to them. They were giving money to them. They were lending to them. A month before they leave, their story changed. Everything changed. They didn't have a supermarket. But God started putting money in their pocket. It doesn't matter where you have failed. God will start a new thing in your life. Because God gave them favor. You're going to stand to your feet and tell the Lord. This night, oh God, give me a favor. Give me a favor for this year. Give me a favor that will carry me through this year. Give me a favor. That will make me a lender and not a borrower. Give me a favor that will put back life into me again. Give me a favor that will cause me to make my family smile again. Give me a favor that will change everything around and turn things around. Give me a favor. Open your mouth and pray. And the people and God gave the people a favor in the sight of their enemies God gave them favor in the sight of Nigeria God will give you a favor in the sight of the Egyptians God will give you a favor in the sight of people that have been mocking you God will give you a favor if you hear this kind of message and you don't pray then I wonder the day you will pray. I don't know which message you want to pray. 
is a personal prayer. 80 years of laboring. And God remember them one day. Are you not tired of this situation? Are you not tired the way you are living your life? Are you not tired of begging? They never had a supermarket. They never had a workshop. God put money in their pocket. God changed their story. Even in the sight of Egyptians. I know my God can do it. I know my God can do it. I know my God can do it. Say God give me a favor this year. Give me a favor. That Pharaoh can see. Give me a favor. That my Egyptians can see. Give me a favor. That Nigeria can see. Give me a favor. That the world can see. Give me a favor. My friend this is a praying church. In this church we pray. In this church we don't think. This is a praying church. You open your mouth. And you come to the throne of grace. With all amount of boldness. And pray. Say God. Unveil my destiny. Unveil my riches. Unveil me. Unveil me. I've been hidden for a long time. I've been hidden for a long time. Unveil me. God unveil them. God unveil them. God unveil them. God unveil them. The people they said they should quiet. They were the people that we are talking now. The people they say you can't talk. These were the people they were talking now. Slaves became mighty men. Slaves became glorious people. Slaves become people that can make a difference. Slaves change every story. Can you pray? Can you pray? I know you can do better than this. Say God connect me to my people. Connect me to my people. Let me be a source of blessing to my people. Because of me. My people will be redeemed. Because of me. My generation will be redeemed. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Lift up your two hands. Our time is gone. Almighty Father. Great, great lesson you have taught us tonight. That the favor is in the people. And in as much as we separate ourselves from the people and we are running to midnight. We will continue to carry sheep around. But until we return. Father we pray. Take us to where the people are. Take us to where the favor is. Take us to where only you can take us to. In the name of Jesus Christ. And tonight. Unveil every hidden favor. Favor that has been quiet for years. Grace that has been quiet for years. This moment, I command a favor. Speak in the name of Jesus. This year, the grace in our life we speak on our behalf. Everywhere we go, we'll be speaking. And the voice of grace will be speaking. And Pharaoh under our feet. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father for answering our prayers. For in Jesus mighty name we pray. Should die, you are the air.